Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I wanna share with you the process that I took to make my very first cutting board and inlay cutting board all at the same time. So I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone and it was one of those projects where I really, really just wanted to come to an end. But it's those types of projects that you actually come out stronger from when you started originally because I learned a lot and I wanna share that with you. I made this cutting board twice, but because it was a thicker cutting board, I ended up surfacing it and starting over two times on each board. So I did the inlay portion a total of four different times. Because I did it four different times, I did use several different settings and the ones that worked out were the Garrett From uh, settings. So I'll put the link in the description below. Lastly, I'm gonna make a supplemental video on the lessons learned because I believe that there are some minor details as a beginner that other videos don't share. So let's go ahead and just jump into the video and I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so jumping into this build, I decided I wanted a thicker board. So I cut my material to one and a half inch strips. And I'm using walnut and maple purchased from Home Depot here. Once the strips were cut off camera, I ran the faces of the strips through my joiner and got smooth faces. I wasn't concerned about the edges since those were going to be surfaced using my CNC, but I did need clean faces to ensure that there were no gaps during glue up. I then covered a scrap piece of plywood with painter's tape and oral cal vinyl to ensure that I could get the board off after the glue had dried. I'm glad I covered the entire piece of plywood because I was originally going to use only the oral cal in the center. Once I was happy with the location of the stripes, I flipped them over and applied a lot of glue and used a foam brush to spread it out. I then flipped the strips back over and used longer scrap pieces of wood, also with tape, to add at the ends in order for the clamping pressure to be on them rather than on the cutting board. I know a lot of cutting board videos show makers using parallel clamps or bar clamps, and while I bet that they are awesome and make the glue up process easy, you don't need them and you can simply use F clamps. If you can get some, bar clamps or parallel clamps, then go for it. But if you think you can't make a cutting board because you don't have those, don't worry about it. You don't need them. So go ahead and get started building. I let the glue dry overnight and came back at it the next day and removed the cutting board from the backer board and removed as much glue as I could using a spatula and my orbital sander. I then took the cutting board over to my joiner to get the sides perfectly flat. Since I built this cutting board twice from scratch, I was more confident the second time that I could get it perfectly flat on each side using my joiner. If you haven't checked out my review on this one joiner, you have to check it out. I'm very, very happy with this purchase. Next, I took the cutting board over to the CNC and ran a surfacing pass. Make sure to take a look at my video on how to do a surfacing pass if you don't already know how to. In this shot, you can see that I use my quarter inch end mill, but you can use your surfacing bit as well. I actually recommend the surfacing bit because it can surface a cutting board faster than the quarter inch end mill. If you're not using clamps to secure your pieces to the wasteboard, I also recommend the x and double-sided tape. This stuff is extremely strong. And you can see me struggling to take off the board here. Once the board was off, I sanded down any fuzzy parts or spirals using my sanding orbital and a 220 grit sanding block. At this point, if you weren't going to do an inlay, what you want to do to finish is wet the entire board with water using a spray bottle or a wet rag to raise the grain on the board. Once it dries, it'll feel rough again. Once the water dries, sand the board again. This will ensure that when your customer wets the board, it will still feel smooth and not rough. After I finished sanding, I measured the area where I would like to have the inlay be at. I then set the board back on the CNC and ran the pocket job. Let me show you how I set that up in Carbide Create. Please feel free to skip ahead if you'd like. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the Carbide Create portion of this. We're gonna go ahead and start with the pocket or the female portion, which is cut into the cutting board. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just set up your job. Here in the dimensions part, put in either the entire dimensions of your cutting board or the area in which you wanna cut into uh, in the cutting board. And then with everything else, just go ahead and enter it accordingly to what you have going on. The next thing is you're gonna to wanna to import your image. I've already imported mine, but import your image. Once you import, go ahead and group everything. You wanna keep everything together. Once you have everything grouped, go ahead and resize accordingly and place wherever you want it. In this case, it was centered in my example, so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go ahead and set up the toolpaths. Make sure, every, make, make sure everything is selected. We're gonna to go to toolpaths. We're gonna do an advanced V-carve because this allows for a flat bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and enable the pocket tool. We're gonna to change our tool. We're gonna to use the 1 8 end mill. We're gonna go ahead and update some of these numbers here. We're gonna use 6080 for the plunge and feed rate. RPM was 18,000. We're gonna click OK. In this example, I used the 60 degree V-bit. We're gonna change this to 
the max depth is going to be 0.11. Our starting depth is going to be at zero or at the very top of the cutting board. We're going to click OK. So we have a nice pocket there. After the pocket was completed, I had to surface my maple piece that would serve as the male portion of the inlay. To get a big enough piece of maple, I just joined two pieces together the night before. And here's a shot of me surfacing this board with the surfacing bit. Okay, so now that, so that's how you would set up the pocket or the female portion that is in the cutting board. So now let's go ahead and do the process on how to set up the male part. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is select your image again. You're going to need to mirror it, mirror horizontals. So that's over here in this transform section, so mirror horizontally. The next thing that you wanna do is ensure that everything's selected and ungroup your vectors. And then you're gonna to wanna to click on the outermost vector. As you can see here, it's this one that goes all the way around this image. So we want this one selected. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to click on this offset vector. And I want an outside vector at three quarters of an inch. Let's go ahead and apply. This gives me this offset out here. Next is we want to select everything, group everything, and we'll set up our toolpath next. We're gonna click on the advanced V-carve option again. We're gonna enable the pocket tool. We're gonna to edit. Our plunge rate is gonna be 60, our feed rate is 80. Our depth per pass is going to be 0.125, and our step over is going to be 0.0875. Click OK. Our, our starting depth is going to be 0 0.09 and our max depth is going to be 0 0.11. This is going to start the carving of the image underneath the surface of the material. And as you can see, we have a raised image now that will fit into the pocket. The purpose of the offset is to allow for there to be a flat area here where you can use your jigsaw or your bandsaw to cut out all this extra material that you don't need. Let's jump back into the build. So this is a shot of the male portion being cut out. Overall, I did this part four different times and this is just one of the four. After the CNC was done carving the male part, I took it over to the bandsaw and cut out the plug. And here you can see the final plug. After the plug was cut, I did a dry fit to see how it would fit and I was very happy. Once I knew it was going to fit nicely, I filled the pocket part with glue and spread it out evenly. I then placed the plug in and secured it using some cinder blocks and I let this dry overnight. After it was dry, I took it back over to the CNC and ran another surfacing job, this time only on the plug part. Once it was as low as I wanted to go, I took the board off the CNC and started sanding the image down the rest of the way. Also, this removes any leftover glue spots. I started with 60 grit sandpaper and ended up with 220. I did have some chipping in my inlay, so I added some glue into those voids and spread fine dust across the entire board. This allowed for fine dust to gather within those voids. And after that, I sanded it again. Off camera, I used my router to add a chamfer to give it a decorative edge. I do recommend that you add something, but the preference is yours. Once that was done and the sanding was done, I took a wet rag and spread water all over the board to raise the grain. Once the water was dry, I sanded the board smooth once again for the final time. And now the moment of truth, adding oil. I added four coats of oil and three coats of conditioner, allowing to dry a minimum of 30 minutes each time after each application. And here's the final product. What do you guys think?